<laughs> Welcome to where I do my recording stuff at, which is pretty much the same place to do my videos at. Now, time to show you what you're going to need. The first thing you need to do video, do audio recordings like I do, is a computer. So down there, uh, next to the Fender Jaguar and the stash of Gatorade and the Harmony, I've got my desktop computer. What I'm running here is a uh, Intel Pentium D overclocked to uh, 4 gigahertz. It's got a uh, A-bit AW9D socket LG775 motherboard with 4 gigabytes of DDR2 memory and a 160 gigabyte SATA hard drive and an 80 gigabyte PETA hard drive and a DVD burner up here and I have a Sound Blaster Live 5 to 1 sound card in this out of my old Pentium 3 so I still use a cheap crappy sound card so the first thing you're going to need of course is a computer running Windows XP to do it the way I do it and of course I have a dual screen setup which makes it easier because I like to put my uh, Windows control panels for the sound over here while I record over on this side which you can see Windows Movie Maker is running right now. Looking down over here I have my big mess. I've got a microphone for doing vocals. Uh, I've got the Behringer V-Amp Pro over here which is a rack mount effects processor. I might do a bigger video on that later. Uh, I've had this ever since. This is the whole main thing I've been using since I've been on YouTube. For a while I did have a GNX1, but this is primarily what I use. Uh, the plugins for it, the only things I have plugged into are two MIDI jacks in the back to run to my computer over here so as to manipulate the effects using the VAMP editor, which we will bring up right over here. And as you can see, I have the VAMP Pro design software that I can manipulate all my patches with. As you can see, you know, clean with delay, default overdrive, default high gain. I have some special patches to make my Jag Stang sound like an acoustic, uh, bass patches, clean synth patches, patches to uh, imitate famous things like Come As You Are and. Rick Ocasek's rhythm guitar tone, uh, Jamie Scott Westorum of the Fix, those kind of sounds. And that's pretty much the setup. And then for software that I use, I use Reaper. Music production. And I have all my stuff organized in a different way. And right there is Reaper. Now, to show you what I use for how things are plugged in. Of course I have my guitar cable and vocal cables all run through the V amp and use the different patches to tailor it to different sounds. I use this button right here to mute it when I don't want to have sound. Right here is my uh, input jack. It's just a, it's a smaller 1 8 phono jack with an adapter on it. The same and the other end of the cable is exactly the same, which plugs into the sound card. I have an identical sound card to the one in my computer right here, and it's plugged into the blue jack right up there. And that's where it goes in. That's your stereo line in. If you plug it into the headphone jack, it ends up mono. All your uh, choruses sound more like a phase shifter, kind of a whooshy sound. Oh, and if you're plugging into MIDI, uh, this is the old school MIDI plug-in before USB, so if you have one of these, you could also use this with your uh, modeling amp or whatever to set the sound. And that's basically what I'll use. I'll hook this all back up and uh, pop open desktop activity recorder and uh, let you see me in action doing some covers or something. Okay. Now I'm going to show you an average recording session in Reaper. Um, well, first off, what I'm going to show you is what we have over here on full screen, all the settings I set before recording session. I have it open, I go up to Options, Metronome Enabled, Options, Metronome Settings, and then you have this window right here. You have this option up here which is Enable Metronome. I leave that enabled. I also leave enable during playback and enable during recording enabled. 
and then count in before playback and count in before recording I enable both of those metronome volume is to set the volume for your click track when you're recording you'll hear a what it does is it allows you to keep everything in perfect synchronization with each other. I don't record the click track and I'm going to show you in a minute exactly my settings for the control panel but right here here's the settings I set for this on my metronome enable I have everything all the way up and the reason being a lot of these newer sound cards have a very weak MIDI feature well, I won't get too heavy in the MIDI, but just basically put your sound card will generate the clicks, but it won't be on the same channel as your guitar is, or bass, or drums, or whatever you're adding. That's generally what I do. Then I go ahead and set these up, you know, multiple tracks. How I put those up real quick is you can either can do Control T, or you can right click and do Insert New Track, and there's your new track, and you can hit Delete to delete them, or remove selected track and that's how you remove those uh, I introduce you some more to the controls over here is where your sounds going to be displayed down here is your master control which is stereo you can pan it to the left or the right but I usually pan it dead center and leave it there this control over here is the master fader which controls the overall output level of all the other channels over here because as you can see as I add tracks, these add up down here, and these are the individual faders for each channel, which adjusts the l overall level of each channel, as well as the panning of each channel. That's how come sometimes I have guitars off hard right, guitars off hard left, or sometimes I have them somewhere in between, just depending on what effect I'm going for. And as for recording levels go, and I'll remove these redundant tracks at the moment, as far as recording levels go, you first enter this, you want to make sure that the best sound I get is by having it right up at 12, which my microphone is perfectly set to. Um, it's going to originally start off by having you set up in mono mode where it will pick up from the left track, so you click on that, and you go down here to stereo input and select left right. You can also select mono input left or right or MIDI and use the virtual MIDI keyboard or MIDI inputs, but since I don't use MIDI, we're not going to mess with that. I'm going to go stereo input left right and now we're picking up both sides um, of the track. Now I'm going to go ahead and record a song, rhythm tracks, all that. Um, you know, just to let you see. Anyway, let's get started with it. 